Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Thank you again for this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Welcome again. As you know, we've all had some very interesting uh, political issues uh, among our men from a national perspective. That's all you see on the tube. But here in Oregon, we, we have our own issues. And one of our major issues that has been sort of announced from a national perspective has been uh, Oregon. I'll say Oregon as opposed to, as, as opposed to uh, Harney County. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we're going to see if what the, with this on this particular segment, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about this issue that's sort of like gotten widespread, almost like a widespread uh, wildflower fire, fire or something of that nature. Wildfire. We, we, we got a really we got an, an issue, so we're going to talk about this. And I've got two brave souls with me today, mm. two brave souls, and I think it's a very it's a good combination. We've got one person that's on the outside of the deal right now. He happens to be running for for governor, and that's that's Bob Nehemiah. Okay, welcome, Bob. Thank you, Bruce, for okay, having good. me. All right, and then we've got, and then we've got the spark plug for the <laughs> spark plug for the legislature, yeah. representing the legislature. Would maybe get some little ideas of what's happening in the legislature, little updates and this and the other, because the governor has made the statement that there's a possibility it might be a, a special session or whatever. But I've got Mike Nierman with me. Good, thanks for and having me on. Bruce. Very excited about Mike. You know, he he likes hockey, <laughs> and I, I I called him up the other day and I said, hey, look, Mike, uh, uh, you know, I need. Uh, I said, don't you need a goalie? He said, yes, Bruce. I said, well, why don't you come on the show? <laughs> so welcome, Mike. Thank you. And Mike represents right now, he's a state representative from District Number 23. He represents Bit Benton County, right? Oh, I, I've got four, four counties. you got four district. counties? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty big, sprawling district. It's four counties, Jesus, and it's got man. even got three congressional districts oh, wow. in it. So it's got Yamhill, Polk, Benton, and a little bit of Marion County in it. You've got all of that, that whole piece? You sure yeah. you're not the Senate? <laughs> no, it's a, it's kind of a rural area, so it's got more uh, more deer than people in it. Wow. <laughs> I like it, I like it, I like it. Well, what i tell you what we're going to do, like I said, we're going we're gonna to have a discussion with these two folks um, and get their, get their perspective in terms of what is going on, because folks need to know. There was quite a, it was an interesting show today on Channel 2, and uh, your vote, your voice, your vote with uh, with Steve Dunn, and uh, so I thought it would be an interesting thing to just that we can talk about that issue at the same time, yes. and then get some overview of that. Well, first off, let's start off by giving just a little background on on Bob uh, uh, about yourself, just real quickly. Like, you're running for governor, right? Yes. Okay. Running for governor uh, as a Republican. I basically just work out of home right now as an independent mechanical engineer, okay. and and I do product development. And I kept seeing things going on, and I thought that I could probably jump into the fray and straighten out some of this. Mess. Why do you want? Why do you want to run? First of all, why do you want to run for governor? Of all what? things, why do you want? To, why does Bob wants to run for governor of the state of Oregon? Well, I originally did it because I believe that there's a, a number of our problems are all based in Congress, mm -hmm. and I wanted to actually get into the governorship in order to be part of the uh, state's convention, Article Five state's convention. Mm -hmm. Uh, to uh, impose uh, some various different types of constitutional amendments outside of the cons or outside of Congress, okay. such as term limits, uh, such as turning maybe Congress into independent contractors so that they can only get uh, the money that they receive for w when they're in office, and then they have to come back to the public and uh, literally live with laws that they create because right now they don't. Uh, Congress has virtually no incentive at all to pay any attention to anything that goes on in the states at all. Uh, and something has to be done with that and about that, and I decided that the best approach is to be governor of this state and be part of that uh, trigger mechanism which causes the state's convention. Okay, That's sound, my number one motivation. Sound, well, you're going to have quite a slate anyway, because you're governor of Oregon, right? Well, I wasn't counting yeah, on this oh, big of a slate, believe oh, me. Oh, well, when man. I started, there was a whole lot less going on. And now there's, there's literally 30-plus different subjects that have uh, turned this state into a mess. Well, good, then. Well, well, welcome aboard. Okay, <laughs> now I'm going to go to Mike. He's, yes. uh, he, he's gone through the same deal, but for, as a state representative, and I'm sure he had some interesting things when you first got involved in this thing, right? Mm -hmm. How far how far back, Mike? When, when did you get involved in, in the, the idea of running for office? One and so, uh, how long you been in? Yeah, so I, I, I got my start. I think uh, back in 2012, I was elected chairman of the Polk County Republican Party, and okay. uh, um, and then I got shoulder tapped to run for legislature in 2014. So this is I'm running for my second term now. So and uh, so some of the same things. As 
says Bob of just seeing what a mess the state is, yeah. is in and wanting to, to do something about that. And you get in there and you look under the hood and it's a little bit worse than you, than you thought it was even from the outside. Yeah, right, so right, right, there's right. There's a lot, lot of work to do. We have, we have a lot of work to do. Good, good. Well, I also recognize the fact that your boss, that she, she, gave, she gave you the, the nod to go in on with this piece. Uh, yeah, 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 you're talking about my wife. Then, yes, right? yes, 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 my boss. Right. Yeah, we, we did it. We did have to talk it over. Yeah, we oh, had so, to talk it over. Yeah, she so, felt comfortable. You got yeah, the support. She, I think, uh, she she enjoys it. You know, so I I get I have to I have to go to these events and I have to go to the Capitol and I have to do that kind of stuff. She can cherry pick. She can she can go to whatever ones she wants to, or she can say no, I don't want to go to that one. She doesn't have to go. So I'll tell you, so, you can't go to that one. That <laughs> right, one. Yeah, so, <laughs> so she gets she gets the best of it though. So. Oh, that's good. That's good. Well, she's, just, she's been real good help for oh, me. Great. So it's good to have a support. Of spouse. Well, look, for the benefits of Bob and the rest of us, um, uh, can you give just a little quickie update of the legislature? Where are we at yeah. this point in time? So we're, we're just out of session right now, yeah, right? So we're just on the verge of starting our, our short session there. And so the short session was sold as um, to the voters. The voters approved it in 2010. It was sh uh, sold to the voters as we're just going to go and just kind of take the corners off the budget and a couple of tweaks here and there and then go home or whatever. And what it's turned out to be is it's turned out to be a, a very partisan uh, kind of thing mm -hmm. where, the, where the, the bills that get put forward are, are put forward often to make people look bad and there's um, there are deep substantive issues that need a little bit more work than can mm -hmm. be done practically in a scramble of a month. So I'm a little bit disappointed in the way that this is shaping up. Really? But yeah. Mm -hmm. So... You know, what comes to mind, and just, I'm just going to throw something out on the table here, you know, this, in this Multnomah County area, Portland area, the Tri-County area here, this $15 an hour thing pretty well came from this particular area. I happen to know the gentleman that was that basically been lobbying for that piece. But I noticed that the, the D's in, 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 in the legislature sort of changed that a little bit. Right. Yeah, so the, the, yeah, there's several flavors of that uh, raise the minimum wage going around. There's the fifteen dollar flavor, and then there's the the gradual flavor, and there's the thirteen fifty flavor, and there's the uh, rural urban flavor that the governor just put out. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, where that where the rural areas can can charge a little bit less, so or can pay a little bit less. So that um, it's there's there's a lot of flavors of of that minimum wage thing. But you're right, they're kind of. Um, most of them have have their origins in in Multnomah mm -hmm. County area. Still a headache on the, on the PERS as far as being able to pay our bills, the state being able to pay their bills. Yep, that's gonna that's gonna be a big issue, and uh, we're gonna have a. a um, I was just talking with Bob. We're gonna have a Cadillac tax coming up. A and, Cadillac tax. Yeah, on uh, the Obamacare Cadillac right, tax, okay. where uh, it's kind of kind of funny because that's not like a pejorative term that some Republican made up there. That act that term actually came from the proponents of Obamacare okay. saying, oh, we're going to charge these uh, people that have these big, you know, luxury health insurance plans. We're going to charge them a Cadillac tax on that. Oh, well, the people that's who, how it came up. Yeah, the people who have those plans, uh, you know, some people in the private sector do, but, but all the people in the public sector do. So all the public workers have this Cadillac thing. And that's going to be a huge cost to the state. They're talking about about a billion dollars um, mm -hmm. that's going to blow in the budget. Um, when when that kicks in, uh, so that's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. That okay. and then PERS is on top of it. Okay. So. Bob, you hear anything? If you're knocking on doors out there, you you're running for governor. You, I'm sure you're all over the place. Anything on your stops and yes. in regards to whether the 15 bucks an hour wage or education or something you want to get I don't, in on the I frame? don't really hear much. What do you people. want to tell these guys? What do you want to tell <laughs> these guys when they go back in this in this short session? What do you want to tell them? What do you need? What do you hear? What I hear is people complaining about the taxes going up. The taxes? Which there, taxes? There Anything is specific? All of them. All of them. If it's a state tax, it's going to jump. If it's a federal tax, it's going to jump. Everything that they have in their businesses, uh, everything's going to jump. And everybody simply says to me, uh, there isn't anything to jump hmm. with. Hmm. I can't. What are we going to do? Hmm. Can't afford it. They can't afford it. I, I know uh, as an independent mechanical engineer, I do a lot of project development. And a lot of my stuff that I develop goes through all kinds of uh, companies around this state. And I go into them and, and I ask them exactly that question. What is your biggest fear? And said so the tax increases. That's number one. And number two, the regulators, when they show up, mm -hmm. they will actually show up and look for absolutely anything that will get them to trigger some kind of fine so that the, they have to pay more money to the state. Now, are they the rent collectors? Is that, is that what the regulators are? You know, my point is that when I look at this whole issue of taxes, I look at it from the standpoint of rent. Everybody has to pay rent, right? Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm talking about really stupid little things like the one example that really kind of put me mm -hmm. over the edge 
uh, also to run mm -hmm. was the fact that this one company that I know real well mm -hmm. uh, had the light switch covers off of the wall and paint uh, uh, things on the floor to protect the paint from right. dripping on their carpet. Okay. And they had two of them uncovered. They were paint the the paint was wet when the OSHA inspector was there, okay. and they got fined three hundred dollars a piece for not having that safety switch cover on the light switch hey, and then the they actually said to me oh, it's just a cost of doing business no that's not right yeah. but then they go back to the legislature with mike i mean from the standpoint yeah. that's where it's created right mm -hmm. the, yeah I'm, I'm on the yeah, consumer protection committee yeah. in the legislature and that's where a lot of this this kind of dumb really? stuff comes well who puts that through i mean the, the, somebody the, where's the origin how does it come come about it, you know it, it's it's a kind of thing you know some little kid somewhere gets hurt or something like yeah. that and and they're, they're sad stories often but but the answer to these problems isn't always to have more legislation to do that and mm -hmm. i think i think uh democrats just in general kind of paint with a broad brush here they tend to be a little bit cavalier about about uh oh the business can just absorb that or this you know mm. this is the businesses are evil corporations and we can we could take it out of their hide that's not mm. a problem mm. but you know that you know it, it's the same thing going back to the 15 dollars an hour minimum yeah, wage right, there right. you know you take it out of their hide too many times and pretty soon there's no hide left yeah, you know exactly, so uh exactly. so um it, it's a problem it's well you know coming back on that i'm glad you brought that back because i want to put that back on the table because i remember when it was it was a 15 dollars an hour raise here within the area there was a big lobbying effort, and I and I and I happen to know the guy Jamie Portridge. He he's, he was a former mail carrier aspect, very passionate kind of a guy. But then that I was concerned about the small business aspect of it, you know, and the, because the small business person, you, when you define the definition of small business, there's some large corporations, but the real small business, I'm talking about the mom and pa shop, mm -hmm. are out there too. They can't afford the fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah. And I understand that there was a possibility that that they were not going to be involved in that deal, but maybe rather than fifteen bucks an hour. It maybe read twelve bucks an hour or something like that, but but still I'm still concerned about that because as a competitor, if I got a large business right next to me at fifteen bucks an hour over here, how do I get my person to to be motivated to work? Mm -hmm. So that's some, that's an issue. Yeah. I think they're going to be discussing those issues. Yeah, yeah, we are, and uh, um, I don't know. I'm I'm hopeful that it'll go well. I'm, I'm hopeful that um, on the the pro raise the minimum wage side that there's uh, enough factions there that they'll start to pick at each other yeah. and maybe maybe we won't get a solution yeah Th that's yeah. i think our only hope so. but it sure would help out if if because uh, i'm a small business person myself it sure would help out if they really define what a small business is you know what's a medium well, I'm just, you know the problem with that though, Bruce, what, what's the deal is, is that you know you, you say okay well a small business is like 25 employees or less yeah, or something yeah. like that then you could do that that's fine but then the problem is now you get you get a gap so now you get no businesses that will hire over 25 employees right. you know and so so it stifles the ability of businesses to grow you know if that if the, at the margins if that's what's stopping them there so you get you put these kind of artificial barriers in there and like you said then you're next door to a large business yeah. that that is paying 15 dollars an hour so so it's you're not really creating a, a good economic situation. They see this with Obamacare. What they yeah. say is if you have 50 employees or less, you don't have to do this. So now these em employers grow up to 50 yeah. employees, yeah. and then they they don't grow anymore, or they start mm -hmm. hiring uh, part-time employees, mm -hmm. or they, they find a way to kind of get around it. And mm -hmm. it's it's not it's not a good way to run the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, the the thing that's so offensive to me about the $15 an hour minimum wage. I mean, I'm of the age, and Bob's about my age too. He's where when we were young, we worked, and you know, I worked at Taco Bell when I was a mm -hmm. kid, whatever for mm -hmm. what six and a quarter an hour, I think, was the minimum wage <laughs> right, back right, then. Right. Then there was kind of a little bit of a spike in the minimum wages and the right. and mm -hmm. the regulations surrounding. Um, younger people working and so they they made it essentially illegal to hire young people yeah. in in circumstances and at wages that young people are capable of doing when i was working at six and a quarter at taco bell i was a you know i was a high school kid mm -hmm. then and that was probably about what i was mm -hmm. worth yeah. back then yeah. i think i hope i'm a little, worth a little bit more now but uh you know it, it has the effect of making it illegal to hire less skilled labor right and right, so right. then the, the the people who take it on the chin are the less skilled laborers yeah. and the the people who are working their way up through the system and need to to get some skill development so that's a problem wow you know i really want to get in this horny county there, but boy he just keeps bringing me up in <laughs> well, these other areas what about I, the very thing i want to say that you want to say something best, about that 15 bucks what do you, anything the, about the that best way around all of that is yeah. economic development. Okay. If 
uh, we got out of the way of businesses and things started cooking again, then the wages are going to uh, naturally increase in order to get the people that they need to run jobs. And I really do believe they're going to come up to somewhere around where they're talking about with a $12, $14 range. Okay, you think I really do believe it will actually make it up to there if all of the businesses have to compete for well, Americans to work on the jobs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, yeah. you know, on that same note, though, I mean, what came to mind after after Mike brought the piece up about the the youth and what the you know when you're young working or whatever, I mean, what happened to the old days when the kids were picking up the berries? Yeah, they That's took right. them out of the field. Yeah, well, who did that? What did that? What? What? what do you have any idea who who actually signed that bill? Who, who, well, what, what, what I, I didn't. I did, did not. Did you do want, that, Bob? No, did you I do did, that, Bob? I did not. Sure, wanna, Bob. I did oh. not want to pick berries so bad. I started my first business <laughs> when I was 16. What'd you do? I made precision dental equipment. Okay, all right. Well, that's a good deal. But that berry, I want to catch that berry guy. So a, a lot, a lot of it though, a lot of it was uh, was uh, was regulations that kind of uh, grew up over time, and um, so it wasn't just like one bill or anything like that. Things like uh, when you have younger people, you can't have them around certain equipment, or you can't have them on ladders, or there's certain Gee. hourly things like they can't work certain hours, or they get different breaks or whatever. So it just makes it inconvenient for uh, for them to be hired. Um, so I, I think that's that's uh, one of the issues. I'll say also there's a little bit of a thing too is we're kind of lax in this co country about um, the uh, illegal labor coming in from other countries yeah, and yeah. that that feeds mm -hmm. the fire too on yeah. that because as an employer mo some employers would be there they prefer to get someone who's maybe a little bit illegal and can't complain through the normal sources yeah, yeah, or doesn't yeah, yeah. want to complain yeah. and so then they can kind of you know and so it's, it's a little bit of a of a institutionalized slavery and it's wow, and it's yeah. wrong wow. and so oh, yeah well so, you're just bringing up all these so we got to talk about harney i, I want to get but, to harney but, county yeah, yeah, too. Harney. But, but, that, but <laughs> since you since you brought up the issue of illegal immigration aspect of it that is an issue aspect of it because they are taking jobs if you will yeah. from oregonians and we're all trying to pay the bill like bob was saying you know what i'm yes. saying so what, what do we do with that situation i mean I, I realize we've got the we've got laws on the books that says these folks are illegal if you will mm -hmm. but we also have laws on the books that says it would be illegal for a person to hire them but we don't enforce that law right yeah right Correct. We're not, so what, what well, do we well, do? Well, Bruce, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm the chief petitioner right now for a ballot measure that would require all employers in the state of Oregon to use the E-Verify system. I thought to, they were supposed to do that right now. No, there's the uh, they just have the I-9 thing, but you can you can fake that documentation. So that so if you come to work for me, I have to get your Social Security number. Right. And, you know, there's a right. list of documents or whatever. Right. And so, but those those documents are easily faked, and so that system's not really working anymore. That mm -hmm. I-9 system. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is we need to do the E-Verify system where you. Get Get online and you actually find out that that and if they don't and if they don't adhere they break the law then they get fined or something right you know, you, know you can go, go you, you can go work for me and give me the three documents i need for the i9 right, right. and then when you're done you can give them to bob he can use the same documents to get hired on right oh, if they work for you yes. they work for him and so some employers have the you know the same guy working you know on 27 sets yes, of documents exactly, so. exactly. wow but we got a lot more to talk about. We got, yeah. I guess we're going to get this Harney. Harney County. It's yeah. going to take us some <laughs> time to get this piece. Of. Who wants to start off? In fact, we'll start off with, we'll, we'll give we'll give uh, Mike the opportunity. Because yes. he's right there with all <laughs> the folks that are representing us, right? Yes. And kind of sort of, what's the definition in terms of, what is Harney County? How did, how did it begin, so to speak? You know, from from his inception and then bringing us up to date, and then Bob, he's out there knocking on the doors yeah. trying to get some reaction. Yeah, so Talk uh, to us. so the, uh, uh, this was uh, I think it was the the Hammonds who uh, had uh, started a fire to control another fire on their land, and I think um, as I understand it, that they weren't they were outside the bounds of law when they did that. So there there are some things there. There's a lot of complex issues here. Um, and then, then things kind of uh, kind of like a snowball just rolling down the hill kind of picked up a few other things so there's things there's issues that um, are just the general treatment of the ranching community by the BLM mm -hmm. or in a larger picture is uh, uh, the federal government and our federal um, officials and I'll name them by name yeah I mean, be, I mean like, government is supposed to be of the people by the people and for the people and we elect folks to go down there and negotiate for us right yeah. that's the idea so yes Starting at the top with uh, with uh, Barack Obama, and then going down through our senators Jeff Merkley and Ron Wyden, and then uh, many of our representatives in Congress there aren't doing things to uh, to keep the federal government off off our backs. And, and in the end, it's really a natural resource issue. Is uh, these these uh, 
resources need to be used by Oregonians to, they need to be responsibly used, but they need to be used by Oregonians to mm -hmm. develop the economy of Oregon. We're a natural resource state. Yes, yes. And, when, and uh, when, we have, when we have a situation like this where our elected officials aren't, aren't um, making that possible or aren't doing the things to make that possible, that's a problem, and that's when you get these kind of reactions. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and, and Bart, I'll, I'll get you in on this piece aspect of it. I think this was it, uh, 2014 or something like that. I mean, when the, the ranchers, the original ranchers, who had basically supposedly had burned the fields a little bit or did something or whatever. Well, that happened, and then they were saying, that happened, that happened six two, years ago. Six years ago, okay, six yeah. years ago. Tell us about that. Six years ago? There, uh, okay, the way I understand it okay. is that there was a fire that got started by lightning. And in order to stop that fire and, and this from fire consuming, was, we're, we're, and fire on what? We're on a piece of land, and on, I guess on, there was a structure on, there on too. On the Hammonds right? land. On the Hammonds land. Yes. Okay. And they started a backfire in order to prevent that backfire from burning up their house and everything like that that okay. they owned, and all of their corrals were in, literally in danger. So they started a backfire in order to prevent the fire that was heading for their house, mm -hmm. in order to stop it. Well, that fire expanded a little bit and actually burned up about 127 acres of federal grasslands. 127 acres out of hundreds of thousands okay. of acres. And that was what they originally uh, told them was a criminal activity. Okay. I, in my mind, oh, lighten up. They stopped a whole 100,000 acres from mm -hmm. burning. But they went ahead and prosecuted them for arson. Okay. They found them guilty. They went and served their time. I think it was a year. It went for a one. year and a half for one and, and a, a year for the Six other. Months. Okay. And they got out of jail. And then all of a sudden, the federal government, the BLM, decided to try and up As what Bureau, they did. Bureau of Land Management, just for the. Uh, Bureau of Land Management okay. decided to take uh, their offense and increase it to terrorism, domestic terrorism. Okay. Starting a backfire to save your property as domestic terrorism, hmm. there's something really wrong with that. Well, who signed off on that and allowed that to happen? I mean, our representative, right? Mike just got no, to well, no, that's no, a federal judge. That's a, a federal judge. Yeah, but I'm still that. saying uh, the, the, we talk about our federal representative. They should have known something, should they have not? Yes. Well, uh, if, if they had followed even basic law like double uh, jeopardy, uh, there's no way they should have gone back to jail at all. And the only reason that they just they went back to bed or jail was because the Hammonds are really good people, okay. and they're a punching bag for the federal government. And they're taking advantage of the fact that they can hit them. They'll go to jail and use them as a good example of what everybody else should do to bow to the federal well, government. Well, I'm missing something here. That's what something. has to be stopped. Well, I'm missing something, though. But the bottom line is that this terrorism thing didn't come back until they were released. Yes. And then they called them back. And, and, and it, well, who, where did it originate? Who signed off on something? Somebody yeah. had to sign off. Somebody had yeah. to sign off. And, and I've our representative, what about our representative? Did they sign off? I have not been able to find out who did that. They should have. All no, of the stuff it, I've it investigated. The, uh, it was the prosecutor in Portland. It, um, wasn't it the, the federal prosecutor in the uh, Federal Department of Justice in Portland, the one that just resigned? I think she was the one. And if you look at her record, she's uh, you know been all had a bunch of stuff where she's had her fingers in a bunch of stuff there yeah. and all that. And that's that's what the problem was. Um, and. Um, uh, I think really when it boils down to it, what it really is, is it get, goes back to it's a natural resource issue. Mm -hmm. There's people that are in the federal government that don't want the resources to be used. Mm -hmm. And and to go back to your point, too, about who are the federal officials yeah, or something who, like that. So, so no, I mean, Ron Wyden didn't personally sign off on it or anything like that. But he perpetuates policies that make the, that keep the hands off the natural resources. Well, that's and, what we vote in. Right. right. And so, so mm -hmm. we, we need some policies that say we're not going to have a... Department of Justice and a Bureau of Land Management and a Federal Fish and Wildlife Service that, that have policies that lock up the natural resources. We need to be able to use those. Oregonians need to be able to use those resources to have a, our livelihood so we can pay the salaries of the, right. Uh, right. Of the uh, federal officials right. that try to lock us up. Right. Right. Now, that was another thing that was coming out in the whole issue with terrorism aspect of it. I guess there was a structure there too, and then there was a bird actuary or something about, about animal life or something like that. Wasn't that part and parcel of the, the problem the, too? Well, yes. And what was that? What was that about? 
Well, many years ago, at mm -hmm. least 25 or since 1975, the ranchers who bought all that land and built their ranches got together and built a dam to hold back some water for their own personal use for irrigation. Mm -hmm. The birds loved it. And that's why they're after that space, because uh, the BLM has the opinion that if it's a bird sanctuary, then the federal government should own it. So they built a bird sanctuary right at the end of that the lake, bird, so to speak. The bird sanctuary cropped up only because they had the water for the birds to use. But there's a physical structure, that basically. Uh, they built a dam to do it. But they built a dam, and they, but you had a physical structure, right? Yes. You know what I'm the saying? The building you're talking the about. The building. Yeah, I'm talking about the building. Not, right? not just a dam, but no, a building. No, the building. no, I'm talking about yeah. the building. There's oh. a building there. Uh, okay. The, the, the wildlife the, building. The, oh, the wildlife thing was built by the federal government yeah. on... Uh, well, by us. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yes. <laughs> okay. The wildlife was a uh, refuge. Uh, since it expanded, they wanted to build something for people to come to and enjoy it. Right. I really right. don't think that the, the ranchers... Uh, were concerned about that. Okay, okay. I mean, but it was part and parcel of the deal, though, too, right? Uh huh. Supposedly, I guess they burned some of the areas of the habitats of the the birds. And I'm just I'm just giving nitpicks mm -hmm. of some of the things that I'm hearing. On, we all, everybody's got views about this piece, and it's just been bombarded all over the newspapers. There and is folks. all kinds of things in newspapers yeah, online. Yeah, yeah. Every place you look has a different opinion about right, it. Right. Right. And it's very difficult to find the ones that are actually telling the truth or making up stories. Well, that's why I got you guys here. That's, that's why I got you guys here. See, yeah. you're around the state knocking on doors, and it is an issue, right? Yes. Everybody's talking about it, right? It's it's an issue mostly because every place I've gone else in the state are in the same boat. Mm -hmm. um, like in Tillamook right now, all their land's locked up for they can't do anything with the uh, uh, forest around there. But as a result of this, or is it, no, or it, it, it's it was the already same thing. Up. Same deal. Same deal. The BLM won't let them use it, and there's some form of environmentalist uh, out there who's keep filing lawsuits and lawsuits on top of lawsuits to keep them from using the land that they're uh, they grew up on, know how to take care of. We've got right. all these people, yeah. widen, <laughs> including, okay. Okay. Uh, that have no idea about how to take care of the land that they live on. But Bob, that's telling their, them how to live. But Bob, that's their job. I mean, that's why we <laughs> that's why we appoint these. I mean, I mean, that's why Mike is sitting here. We got Mike here because he he's independent. That he's representing his people. He got several counties that he's representing. This is an issue, and that's why Maybe they get elected. Issue. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so we, we want to know what's going on. See, I mean, I just, one, one solution that I proposed, kind of yeah, half, tongue, solution, half yeah. tongue in cheek, is to yeah. say uh, whenever you have federal land that burns. The assumption should be that it's not being cared for properly, and so that it should deed over to the state. After uh, once it catches on fire, then the state owns it. Uh, How about that? Let's just uh, do that, that's, and that's then we'll a, then we'll chip deal. away at that fifty-three percent. That's a pretty good deal. Huh? That's a pretty that? good deal. What do you think about that, Governor? I think that <laughs> would be a very good deal. Yes. You, you like that pretty good? I, I, I do like that idea. Okay, and then you'd communicate that to our representative to Congress. You, you know, because Oregon spent the money on taking care of that property. We should own it. And, okay. and if the if the federal government uh, is truly taking care of the property, they need to manage it in such a way that it's not going to burn. Mm -hmm. I, I know there's you can't stop every fire or anything like that, but we get more and more acres burned every year and stuff. So it it sounds to me like it's it's continually being locked up and they're closing the roads and all that, and that presents a fire danger. Mm -hmm. And so if it's uh, the assumption should be if it if it burns, it's not being cared for properly. Mm -hmm. That'll that'll do two things. That'll put it in the hands of an entity that's better able to care for it, i.e. the state of Oregon, mm -hmm. and it'll take it away from the federal government and so we'll have less of our land owned by the federal government. Well, I'm going to throw this on you. We got we have two more minutes. We're going to take a short break or whatever. But then again, like I said, we've got a we got a sitting governor now and and governor Kate Brown. And I my the question was, well, why wasn't she on top of this four years ago when these folks were, after doing that process, these folks were prosecuted and sent to jail and whatever? The same issue was there then. Yeah. Okay, why why wasn't someone there doing that so we wouldn't have to get in the situation where outsiders came into the state? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about now because the folks are going they're back in jail now, right? The, the, yes, the, the, the Hammonds are. The, the yes. Hammonds are back in jail, mm -hmm. and now we got folks from the outside. And, they, and you know, we got a, we do have a national, we got a presidential election going on, and everybody in politics. But I think we need to spend a little bit more time on our issues here mm -hmm. in Oregon. And so now we got outsiders bringing their issues 
to the table, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then here we are, it's disrupting us all over the bridge. So Bob, uh, you're looking at running for governor in that aspect. How would you have handled that situation? Would you have allowed those, would you have gotten involved initially on this piece? And, yes. and maybe tell these people that are coming outside, outside coming in here to say, hey, no, we got this. We got, we're taking care of this piece. Governor has been handling that type of thing notably since 1872. Okay, okay. It's been going on for an awful long time. The governor should have stepped in, stopped some of the stuff that's going on, mm -hmm. even if uh, it means declaring clemency. Back off, everybody. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to jail. Let's work this out. And absolutely no effort was done at all other than I'm going to send the National Guard down there, mm -hmm. unknown for what might happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, if I were governor, the only reason I would have sent the National Guard down there is to get the BLM out of the way. Mm. But whatever, would you, would you have announced to the our representative to government? I mean, to D.C., if you would you have announced to them, hey, this is what we're going to do? Or? If I had to. Okay, okay, okay. I don't think that the National Guard was necessary at all. Maybe the increase in presence of the police to try and maintain a little bit of law and order, that's fine. I, I tend to agree with that. But it's a, a BLM versus uh, the state of Oregon issue. And it should have been worked out by the governor with the BLM mm -hmm. to try and get the truth out of this whole mess and see what we can do about it with our uh, Wyden and uh, Webley. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a short Merkley. break. We're going to take a short break and come right back here and, and get this situation pretty well squared away because I'm, and we gotta, we, we're definitely getting to the point where we're defining what government is. It's supposed to be a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. I'm yes. talking about us, and we elect these folks. Take a short break. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Uh, hey, look, we're talking about a number of things. We're talking about the legislature. Uh, we we're just basically doing a little overview of the legislature and where we're going. And, and then we, we're hitting, uh, targeting one major issue here within the area here. And we're talking about Harney County. That's a biggie. And if you haven't been able to get in on the first part, first half of the show, you can pick it up on YouTube uh, or the schedule uh, Tuesday and Friday shows aspect of it. Anyway, but I've got I've gotten two gentlemen here. One who's running for governor. He has enough. Uh, he had enough spunk to be able to say, "Well, I'll come on the show." Because they they know I'm a pretty heavyweight, you know. But thank you very much, <laughs> Bob, for being here with us. And then we got Mike Nearman, he, who is a sitting uh, representative. Uh, he, he represents several counties. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very familiar. Well, I, I know Harney. How far you are from Harney? Harney. Well, so I'm, I'm on the west side of the. Of, or of the Willamette River, most of my okay, district is. Okay. So kind of in the coast range. So I'm pretty far from Harney You're County. pretty far from it? Yeah. But, but, the, my, 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 but my point is that you get involved in things. Yeah, I it's like a similarly that. rural area, right, area yeah. so right. there's a lot of rural, right, rural right. stuff there. So. Well, I'll tell you what, before we get right back up into the Harney, I'm going to throw another little piece. I think it, it sort of works. in the Because when you start thinking about, all, there, there's always beneficiaries, right, to any different incident, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of times you never know who the beneficiaries are. And it comes around with, there's one question I want to ask you, Mike, in regards to that. This, the legislative made some headway on corruption and transparency. Well, we, we didn't Did really, you? no, we didn't. We uh, did No, the governor, the governor had, we go. the governor had three bills that she put out in the last session. Okay. Um, and they, 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 it was small ch change. Like, for instance, they had, 
because of the John Kitzhaber didn't have a wife at the time he had his girlfriend living with him. Yeah. So there were some things to define the first spouse or whatever and whatever. And that's fine as far as it goes. But that's not really cut into no. the core of no. corruption no. in the state of Oregon. Which should have been. So so the the top the top one, the number one is it, there's 50 states in the union. 49 of them have a way for the legislature to impeach the governor. Guess which state doesn't have the ability to impeach the governor? California. So, no, it's no. <laughs> good guess, but you know, no. you have to have a lifeline. I just throw one out there. Okay. No, it's the Oregon? state of Oregon. Yeah, you and so kidding. so we we can't impeach our governor. So the only thing that we can do is we can do uh, we can recall the governor, and I think it takes like two hundred thousand signatures just to get it on the ballot, and that just doesn't seem like like if you have kind of situation where where there's a, a big corrupt event or something like that, you don't have nine months or whatever to 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 get. Well, who's those, leading the charge? I mean, so, you got Republicans and you right. got. Democrats in this piece, who's leading the charge to say no, and who's saying yes? Well, the Republicans are leading the charge. I know I am. And saying yeah, no, I guess. So it's, to, to get some, we, we need to get some corruption. We need to have the some reform, stuff, yeah. reforms in government. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was a Republican. Her name's Jody Hack. I was okay. a co-sponsor of the bill. All right. To, to, ha were. to have impeachment, and we need to rewrite our constitution. And where is it at right now? Uh, it it uh, passed the House overwhelmingly okay. in the last session. It passed the House, and the I'll, I'll name a name: Peter Courtney, the president of the Senate, would right. not would not give it a hearing. That's over a the Democrat. Senate. He's a right. Democrat. He's a Democrat, right? and he uh, and yeah, and so he he scuttled the whole thing. So there, so we still have the inability to imp impeach our governor in the state of Oregon. Why couldn't so, we ask for a vote? We could have done that. Why, why couldn't we have gotten that? And, so uh, in, in order to do that, in order to, to have the ability to impeach our governor, we have to amend the Constitution. So right. there's two ways to do that. One yeah. is the citizens can go and do a, a okay. thing. The, 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 problem, the problem with that is, is that it's really, it's very, very, very yeah, difficult money, to, yeah. to do that. And especially if you have an issue that doesn't have any money behind it. So mm. for instance, like we have the, the, we had the GMO battle last year, which was a very close yeah. battle. And there's money on both sides. So that, that one, there's enough money to get it on the ballot. Mm -hmm. But to impeach the governor, there's not really a moneyed interest that, that wants to get mm -hmm. involved in that. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it more likely has to come from the legislature. The legislature can refer things to the people. But it's a serious issue, it, right? It, it is it a serious issue. issue. And I know you wouldn't yeah. have got back this stuff if, was, if, in fact, would not have benefited the people of Oregon. Right. 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 So we, we, have, we have other ones, too. We have other ones. And these the Democrats keep scuttling it. I, I, the governor brought up on there's going to be a bill um i'm looking for it uh but uh, there's going to be a bill that's going to require it's it has to do with how public agencies um give out public information and right now the the agency itself i'm talking about a public agency like the department of transportation or the department of human services mm -hmm. is they um if you ask them for information, they're like judge, jury, and executioner. They decide what information you get, and they just give it to you, and they give it to you on whatever timetable they want to give it to you on, and there's no consequences. And if you want, if you're very wealthy or whatever, and you really want the information, you can go take them to court, and guess what? The Justice Department is going to be their lawyers for free. You pay for your own lawyer. How about that? How's state? that work? How, state? The yes. state's going to pay for the state's lawyer. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to pay for both lawyers. You're, if you want information from the state, you're going to pay for your lawyer to sue the state, and you're going to pay taxes to the state so that the Department of Justice can provide lawyers to the Department of Transportation or whoever, whatever you're suing for the thing. So you're going to pay for both attorneys. Yeah, How about that? Have a nice day, Bruce. Well, gee yeah. whiz, let's see when that Attorney General's office is up for grab this time around, isn't it? It, it is, yeah. Okay. We, we who's don't, responsible for putting those laws together? Yeah, so we, we need a candidate the legislature for... legislature or what? Um, for doing what... Uh, those, 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 those laws. Yeah, the, the laws that I'm talking about. Yeah. Where, what we they need were to on do. the books, right? They were on the books. It says you, you, this is exactly what happens. You have to pay for this, this, and that. Right? Well, no, I mean, it's not just on the books, but that's just the way that it's set up. That's there. what I'm that saying. The, yeah, the Department of Justice uh, defends the state, whatever. So that's, yeah, the, I guess, yeah, it yeah, is on the books. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been so, there how long? How long? Yeah, yeah. It's just something forever. Just but, you know, um, it, you know it, I mean, the, the, that... Uh, but the public public records hasn't really been a big issue. Now, when you have this one party rule kind of yeah, thing, right. and they're not all that wild about being exposed for what they're doing, whether it's Department of Energy and they have this little marketplace going for uh, energy tax credits or something like that, eh, they're not really interested in doing that. And Jeez. they pull little tricks. Like you know, what one of the tricks they pull, Bob or Bruce, is they uh, they um, they ask the uh, attorney general for advice on how to proceed and then if you want to do a public information request on what was that advice you got from the attorney general they hide behind oh no that's attorney client privilege what? and they hide behind that yeah and so you you don't have access to that information now the idea of attorney client privilege i mean that's like a time old legal thing and that's you know i was involved in a crime or something like that and i get to talk it over frankly with my lawyer mm -hmm. and you can't go 
subpoena my lawyer right, and say, right. well, what did Nierman say? Did he do it or not? Right? You can't do that. So, so that's the idea of attorney-client privilege. It's not so that, that a state agency can say, oh, no, 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 we had our attorney in the room, and therefore you're cut off from any information about this. That's what they're doing with it. Wow. That's what they're using wow. it for. Wow. So anyway, we have some opportunities to change some of that kind of okay. stuff. Okay. And I think that the governor has, um, she testified at a hearing during an interim session there, and uh, the, there's some opportunities to to mop up some of that okay, stuff. Okay. So I'll be looking for those in this upcoming session. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you a suggestion. You just throw sure. it out there on the table. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll tell you what, we're going to get away from the brands. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll run we'll run for the brand, but once you get down <laughs> to the legislature, you're just out there, you know, just speaking for the people. Yep, that, that's the way I see it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. I mean, we, and, and I can also... Uh, what do you think? What, what do you think about I, that, I, Bob? I absolutely guarantee that impeachment will get voted on if there's a Republican governor. <laughs> well, I'm saying we, we won't. We, like I say we won't call them that once they in, right? That's the idea. See what I'm saying? But no, we, we've got some issues, and, and, I, and I'm not trying to be funny about it. But the bottom line is that we got to get back down to the point that it's a, it's a government of the people, yeah. by the yes. people, and for the people. Yeah. And like Mike was saying, we're going to have to do things like maybe look at term limits. I mean, I don't know whether or not they they even consider, they don't want to yeah. consider that. Well, so I, I'll, I'm I mean, not I'm, such I'm a big just, fan of term yeah, limits but, too. But, so, what, but, what I'm just saying, I just want people to do. I, I, I just don't want them to make a career of it. I mean, that's yeah. what that's I'm, what Bob I'm, saying. I'm completely in favor of term limits. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think we don't like need any careers. Yeah, we want to work like yourself. I don't believe that elected or appointed officials should have anything but what they earn. Well, like, like I said, I took a campaign yeah. pledge myself to not make a career of it, and I don't accept any retirement money from the state in any form just because of the fact that, that that's what you do when you're in a career is you get part you Well, get how many are like you, Mike? But, well, um, how many? Oh, there's a couple, though. There's, you said yeah. two. How many uh, out of what? How many, uh, how many uh, reps you got? There's, there? there's 30 senators and 60 representatives, so 90 total. But there's, uh, but, uh, there's so some. So 50 has a sign. Mm -hmm. No, so there's, there's <laughs> some, though. But, uh, but you, you know, though, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, on the term limits thing, I think that um, you're 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 treating the solution and you're not treating the problem. And it's the same thing like uh, when you were talking about uh, well, what if we define a small business and say oh it's tw they'll draw the line at 25 yeah. or something like that, and then the 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 problem escapes the solution there. And I think you're going to have the same thing with term limits. So um, I'm not a big fan on term limits. Um, I am term limits. I ran okay. against an incumbent, and I beat an incumbent. Okay. So if you you're looking at term limits well, on the face, you, I, right here, I want here. you to stay right there. Yeah, I yeah, I, yeah. See, but what I see in you, what I see in you, and I'm, I'm gonna throw this out as a kind of a solution to the problem. I don't throw out something if I have a solution. My my thought would be, okay, fine. When you file to run for office, you have to identify specifically what are you gonna be going down there for. And then yeah. if you then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you go through the whole process, and now it's two years up. And you come back, and the people say, well, did, did he get the job done? <laughs> yeah. and yes, he got the job done. Well, okay, fine. You can run on your record again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you don't get the job done, guess what? Then Bob can come back up and say, well, I'm going to run against you because you didn't do your job. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, the only thing I see wrong with that uh -oh. is not much. Talk to me. That's like making a promise that somebody else will do something in the legislature. No, no, no. That's your job. You got to get. You know the count, right? Mm -hmm. You know what the numbers. You know what you have yeah. to get, right? And you can't guarantee yeah. that you're going to get anything done, but you can say this is what I'm going to try to do. And I think there's, uh, I mean, just the the act of campaigning is kind of an informal thing where that goes on. That's, so I think it's yes. well, then the person could run the first time, see, and then you couldn't run the second time, right? Then you can come back if you got an idea and run again. Anyway, <laughs> my point is that we need representation. That's yeah. that's the point I'm trying Correct. to make. Correct. We, we because we got this situation, we're getting right back to the, the harney. Here we are sitting here talking about something, and that, we're not. That going to get representation we have, until we can get rid of the corruption. Exactly. See, here we are talking about a subject matter that, in all due respect, the voting public has relied on you all to take care of it. That's the key. Mm -hmm. yes. And here we are sitting here, and it's disrupting the yeah, I mean, it's dividing people. Yep. It's dividing people. I mean, we, we, we've already gone through this whole issue of race we talked about, because Indians are there, they're at the table, too, now, at this point yep. in time. People with water rights, they're there at the table, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, from, you know, there's special interest. That's why I was interested in the corruption and transparency aspect of it. There's a lot of corruption in there, and a lot of yep. folks are trying to keep that stuff under the, under the rug. Yeah. And watch the, it. watch the natural resources. The that's, natural resources. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah see, so, so that's an issue. Bob, you hearing anything on the table about that kind of stuff? About yes. That? I, again, it goes back to should I trust the government or not? Mm -hmm. Nobody trusts the but government. But not the government. Now, like I'm saying, now, you're the governor, and if you're going to be okay, solving this absolutely. problem. Absolutely. Everybody you, in office right now is untrustworthy by everybody I've talked to. 
And that's nationally known, by the way. That's, that's, that's across the board. We just have to make our elected official more responsible. Yep. So, sort of like where Mike's at. You know, it, he's he's even, right there. When, well, Bob, when Bob says every elected official is not trustworthy, I'll even put myself in that category yeah, there. Yeah. Now I know myself and I am trustworthy, yeah. but no one should tr should have to be put in a position yeah, where they have yeah. to trust me. Yeah, right. And so my office is completely transparent. Mm -hmm. And uh, and um, I am uh, completely open and transparent with everybody. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, But but uh, I, I try to not put the citizens in a position of having to trust me so. yeah and, and uh, I'm willing to make a campaign promise as I don't want people to trust me I want them to keep their eyes on me and that that also you know if they trust uh, a politician that just means that you're gonna let them do whatever you believe that they're yeah. supposed to do mm -hmm. if if I don't have anybody trust me they're gonna watch me I get feedback mm -hmm. right now they don't get feedback. Okay. They, they don't even want feedback in the case of the current occupant in the... Well, that's, in fact, that's what I was going to ask you right off the bat in terms of solutions to the problem. That's what we'll do in the next 15 minutes. Let's, I'll just go through both of you guys in terms of where should we go? What should we do right now? You're governor of the state of Oregon. How do you, how do you take care of this mess? What do you do? we got to go turn back time on several of the things that have been done uh, to create an excessive amount of employees in state. Yeah. I, for instance, believe that Metro should be completely abolished except for the one person that was originally cleaning up the zoo. Uh, no, there, I'm, thinking about, I'm thinking about Horny, Horny County. Let's, 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 let's be more specific. Oh, I'm, to, I'm, I'm sorry. I know you got quite a, hey, look, you got a slate on, yeah, I know you've got issues on the table. You want to, but I mean, for this uh -huh. one, so we can get this one out the way, let's, hit, let's stick on Horny. What do we, what do we do in Horny County? Uh, in right Arnie, now, what do we do right now? What do we, what right do we, now, the governor should have gone down there and stood between the BLM and the people occupying there and say, knock it off, both sides. Uh, declared clemency on this little skirmish and said, it's over. You go home. Everybody knows that it's happening. You accomplish your goal. Let's get back uh, to life as it's supposed to be here and uh, move on knowing that the BLM is going to be under severe scrutiny from this day on. And if they act up again, everybody's going to know about it, and they're going to know the truth. Okay, okay. And right now we have a, a governor who doesn't want anybody to know the truth because that's part of corruption. Okay. okay. So I don't, I, that's why I don't think she's even interested in, in trying to solve this problem that way. She would rather send the National Guard down there to force them out, arrest them, and get them all thrown into jail. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your solution to the problem would be, okay, you call the federal government, i.e. the representative, you call the state representatives, the state said it, a big table, right? You got the state, no, folks representing that particular county area, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got, naturally, then you got the congressional folks and you got the Senate, right? And you got them all at the table, right? And discussing this issue. And you'd be making the same station, right? Yeah. Right? Because at the end of the day, the people who are going to be affected are going to be seeing something happen. And I'm not putting out the National Guard because that's, that's your troops. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's if, right. hey, I, I, want, I, I, I tell you, after we make a decision, that's it, one way or the other. That's it. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, and buts, right? Fair? Right. What do you think about that? You so so uh, I, I got maybe a little bit different thing. Um, so first yes, of all, yes. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not really looking for a solution so much as I think that there's a lot of opportunities here. Mm -hmm. and I, so um, cool. there's, there's a few things. Let's take a step back. So first of all, I think um, that uh, this country was founded, the opening shots of this country were citizens that went to go take over government buildings in Lexington and Concord. Yes, so right. um, yep. so uh, we, have a, we have a proud history of taking over, in that case, of federal buildings. It was the King's Building yeah. back yeah. then. But, uh, <laughs> but we have a proud history of that. On the other hand, the threshold for, uh, I believe in the rule of law, and so the threshold for taking over federal buildings should be fairly high. And in this case, I'm not sure that that threshold has been met. There's been abuses, but uh, I'm not sure that that's been met. It's it's really, it's hard for me to not be sympathetic mm -hmm. to people, especially when I hear about the Hammonds who are good people and, mm -hmm. and are, are victims of the legal system that's trying to help them. But uh, we have some, the, we've built some great opportunities here because we have several issues that are um, mm -hmm. on the table here. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I, uh, one of them that I think is a big issue that I see being played up in social media is the comparison between these guys and the Occupy people. Yeah, the and so, um, so, for instance, I saw a little... Uh, no, not Bundy. No, no, not Occupy. Bundy. No, the, Occupy, the Occupy Wall Street people o that turned into Occupy Oh, oh, oh you're, thinking about, oh, you're, bringing, you're yeah. bringing it in my territory. Uh, I'm, I'm com <laughs> yes. So, so, um, you know, so right now, so the governor's all saying, oh, we need to get to bring this to an end, and we need, these people need to be arrested and be dealt with yeah. most harshly and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying... Where where were you when they were taking over the parks yeah, in Portland right, and all that right, kind of stuff? Right. So um, so I'm I'm happy to see those kinds of comparisons and I'm happy to to um, to underscore the hypocrisy of some people mm -hmm. that are are speaking out against against this. So um, the other thing too is we there's several kind of issues that have been kind of wrapped up in this that maybe didn't originate w uh, with this particular thing but kind of got dragged into it and I'm okay with that because uh, those issues need to get a little bit of play. Mm -hmm. So it's um, the overreach of the BLM the um, the just I keep bringing up the issue of how do we manage our natural resources in Oregon mm -hmm. or how do we get them managed mm -hmm. for us by mm -hmm. the federal government and then uh, things like uh, just the uh, that the federal government owns 53 percent of the state of Oregon. 53 percent. It's 53 percent. 53. 53. They got majority. They got the majority of the state of yeah. Oregon there. That that that's an outrage, you know. And uh, just the, so these things these things are getting some some play and some hearings and, and and all that. And I'm happy with that. So we have some huge opportunities here. And I'm I'm happy that at least at this point it doesn't seem like there's been huge amounts of damage to buildings or federal property or anything like that mm -hmm. nobody's been killed or hurt or anything like that Thank and God. right and uh so i'm okay that wasn't that wasn't true with the uh with the occupiers no, that were down no, at the I parks agree. and there was there was agree. rapes that occurred yep. and, and mm -hmm. there was uh rampant drug use going on and some things like that so so um i'm kind of happy with the uh, with the situation as it is and um i'm i'm not wanting the national guard to be called in. i think mm -hmm. that's too heavy-handed and i'm happy to let the federal government um, and the uh, elected officials who represent us in our federal government, and that would be Ron Wyden, Jeff Merkley, Earl Blumenauer, Suzanne Bonamici, uh, uh, Peter DeFazio, mm -hmm. and Greg Walden, mm -hmm. and Kurt Schrader. I think okay. I got them all there. Okay. I'd be yes. happy to have all of those people that I just named have a little bit of egg on their face for what's going on in their state and to say to those people, uh, to say, you go solve it. That list of people, mm -hmm. you go solve this, you mm -hmm. find out what's wrong, and you mm -hmm. go fix it. Like and that. so so uh, I'm happy to just have the situation go on as it is. I got you. I like that. Boy, I tell you, that's, that's a good deal. Now the key well, is Well, I do believe it's time for them to go home. Okay. okay. But they can't because as soon as they walk across a certain boundary, they're all going to get arrested and uh, prosecuted for all kinds of things. Uh, terrorism, probably. <laughs> probably terrorism, <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And and that's where I believe it should be stopped before that immense expense and, and all that, mm -hmm. that happens. They brought attention. They accomplished their goal. It's time to go home. Let's just call it a no harm, no foul, because no harm or nobody's been hurt. Let's, let's calm this situation down and deal with what they pointed out now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then but then i'm hearing though the guy says no he said that today on tv yeah. he says he's not going anywhere yeah well that's what i mean he can't mm -hmm. no, he no. really can't yeah, he doesn't want to walk out of there and just get stuck into a prison and have the the key thrown away because that's what will happen so i guess the federal government needs to drive a tank into the side of the building or something like that <laughs> they get, you know, or whatever i don't know what the ball's in their court i'm the happy in their court? i'm happy yes. to have the ball in the court of uh, of the the federal uh, the, those courts, guys the those federal guys you named the, the seven the, people I the named people you I'll named, named and, them again and, if you and, want and, and, and <laughs> in there too right yes, yeah, yes. yes. and then women both on that yeah. end mm -hmm. well well by George I tell you so we we really don't have a well like I said you guys have given a solution now the key is it are they going to be able to follow and if they don't follow and yet that's I don't know who's running but I think everybody's running come think about it. I think uh, Ron Wyden is running. Yeah. Yes, no, not uh, Merkley. Merkley is Merkley's not, not, Merkley's not, but everybody running. else is. Yeah. yeah, and then you got the and all your representatives mm -hmm. are running. So, folks, you may want to take note of those names. Mm -hmm. And it's my understanding you can, if you're even in this county, you can run in another area, right, for for reps, right? Yeah, I, I think so. You can yeah, you run can. for Congress. You can, you anywhere. can run anywhere in the yeah. state of Oregon. So, yeah. hey, you can run anywhere in the state of Oregon. Yeah. So here's an opportunity. <laughs> this, that's the issue you're going to use. You're going to use Harney County and say, hey, just take take the advice that Bob and Mike has given here and just say, I'm running for office, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Didn't cost that much. Just paperwork, right? Yep. All about 
I think it was a hundred dollars. Yeah, about a hundred bucks. If you need some help, you can go to your local political party, and they'll get you. Yes. They'll get yeah, you on sure, They sure can. Yeah. They get very nonpartisan when you want to run. Right? <laughs> yeah. Supposedly, right? Yeah. Well, all those are partisan races, so they you're going to get. You're going to bring up some partisan mud here. Well, that's okay. There, that's so. okay. Yeah. That's okay. I'm sure they got something on that. But no, you know. But in all due respect, we've got to do something. I mean, I, I keep going back to the point about it is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. That's the way this country. I mean, that's that's exactly what happened when we had the uh, when we when we had the the first war, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And behind that same piece, I mean, it was about people, right? Yep. Then we went through the well, we went through the, with that one, and uh, then we went through the the, the, uh, the, the was it was it the what was it was the other one we had? We 1812. Had, we had 1812. Yeah, 1812. Right, right, right. War between the states and whatever. We did that piece, and then here we are today, and it's still the people. But we lost the lost the the, 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 the enthusiasm and and the passion of why, mm -hmm. what made this country was all about. And we we got to get get down to that point because a lot of things are happening, right? Yep. yep. Okay. Yes. Any lasting comments? I got got about, we got about another four minutes. I'll say one thing, Bruce. Right. Is there, there's a there's a group that's kind of involved with this, and they're called the Three Percenters. The Three and, Percenters. Yeah, yes. and and um, um um they're they're good people. There's some some people would say they're a little bit kind of a militia kind of thing, and I know some of them, and they're good people and all that kind of stuff. And I don't want to endorse them or anything like that. But I just want to talk about their name. They call them the Three Percenters, and the way that they gave themselves that name is they they say that during the American Revolution, right. only three percent of the people living here were actually engaged on the side of the of the continental forces right. during the revolution wow. and what that tells me the, the point that they're trying to make with their name is that a very small number of people can make a huge difference yeah. and yeah. and w when uh, I, that keeps going through my head when mm -hmm. you say mm -hmm. you know of the people by the people for right. the people right. is that small, um, yeah. a, a bunch of very engaged people with that are serious and yeah. uh, are Hardworking and very engaged can make mm -hmm. a huge difference, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. Um, I, I, I kind of find that interesting of, yeah. about their name. So. Well, you make it a good point too. Even the guys that are there right now, they're, they're there right now. They yes. have every right. They are Americans. Mm -hmm. Yes. Somebody just need to sit down with them and talk about the issue. Yes. That's, that's the way we've always been, and I like that. Everybody yeah. get because they're part of that two percenter. Yeah. I mean, they're part of that, and yeah. we and you got to understand that they are part and parcel of the whole. Yes. And we need to get this thing resolved, Bob. Real quick, I got about another minute. Real quick, another right? Minute. Real quick. Vote for me. What, uh, yes, uh, yeah, give me please, give me please vote for Bob Niemeyer. You, you got a phone number? Uh, give me a phone number. Please go to uh, uh, bobniemeyer.com, and I, I do need some financial support. Okay, good. That sounds good. And you, Mike, you're in what, what, Benton County? How many, how many counties? I got vote four, for four counties, three you, congressional you districts, you up seven. You're up for re-election right now, right? Since, yes, I am up okay. for re-election. And you want yeah. you want to get back up in there, right? Yep. And right. Yeah, so you can go to nearmanfororegon.com. There, there, there you go. Yeah, and you, you can go. check yes. me out there. Sounds great. Well, folks, hopefully you, you've learned a little bit about this issue about Arnold County. But more, more than important is that we've got to get involved. Is it? And, and I think Mike made the point about the fact that only 2 or 3% people don't vote. Get out and register to vote and exercise your vote. And for those of you who would like to run for office, like we said before, you can run for any congressional rep representative race in the entire state. It's the government of the people, the yep. government people, okay? And so on the other hand, get involved. You got these two guys, they're very representative. Get involved with them, give them a call. Get involved in that campaign. Mm -hmm. So thank you, and as, as one would say always, you know, back to what you believe in. I'll see you next week. Have a good one. <laughs>